defined in Wikipedia are pseudo-skeptics, that is James Randi Devotees, who believe the simplistic notion that religious people are just irrational and only deserving of online sneering and jeering empathy from more evidence-based thinkers, like their superior, skeptic selves, here offered is an explanation of a huge difference between them and you the skeptic, and the religious person, which reveals the religious practitioners as being highly likely more evidence-based thinkers than your own skeptic self. The explanation is quite simple. A finding has been that people who have had paranormal experiences or know someone who has readily and happily take the scientific evidence of the paranormal, such as telephone telepathy, knowing who is calling, is scientifically proven and done by millions of people daily. Vociferous denials and condemnation come from online, pseudo-skeptics, randy devotees, who apparently, are completely deprived of paranormal experiences. So they just can't imagine it's possible. But to the James Randy devotees, it may be worth listening to how religious people are motivated often, in large numbers, by personal, paranormal experiences, that they never speak of to anyone. Paranormal experiences beyond the comprehension of deprived skeptics. Now prepare to be astonished, skeptics. At least 50% of people report, in surveys, they hear internal voices, or disembodied voices. Yes, that's every second person, walking down the street, hears internal voices, one time, or another. The voices may only say one sentence, one piece of advice, in times of grave threat or crisis. Many people report they have been steered to safety, saved from death or injury, by a disembodied voice, supplying a firm clear warning. Coming so close to death or injury, people recall these events, dwelling on them, for decades. Some people have this experience numerous times, and it becomes for some, not just a crisis-triggered event, but a daily normal happening, simply by daily repetition. Evidence-based thinkers, presented with this daily evidence, will likely piece together an explanation, and one possibility is, theirs is a religious experience. Comes from being surrounded by churches etc. in almost every town. Now is that such a bad first explanation? Dear skeptic, it's not irrational, it's evidence-based thinking, that you praise yourself for doing, dear skeptic. But the skeptics deprived of this internal experience evidence, cannot comprehend What's happening to these other average people? Now, guess what? This was announced in Time magazine that 50% of people experience these near inexplicable disembodied voice rescue interventions, and two things stand out. One, religions can't explain them, and don't. Two, and they occur in all religions, ethnic groups, and even two atheists, rich and poor. Conclusion, it's not a religious event. It's completely natural, and very widespread. But it hasn't happened to you, yet dear skeptic. That's all. So maybe you just have to wait. You are simply deprived of this experience so far, which puts many others ahead of you, in this warning voice, life experience. And they look to a few places, including religions, for explanation. Wouldn't you? Dear skeptic. Of course, people hearing voices don't talk about this, for fear of ridicule. It is yet another, societal taboo. And ridicule is always available in endless supply from Randy pseudo-skeptics, his devotees, right? The intervening rescue voice, reported by so many, has a nickname, not to be taken too literally. It's simply a half-explanatory name. Every evidence-based thinker, does provisional concept titling, is that right? Don't you also? Dear, deprived skeptic. Reported in a Time magazine headline, Guardian Angels are here, say most Americans, our and half of all Americans believe they have been helped by a guardian angel, in the course of their lives, according to a new poll by the Baylor University Institute for Studies of Religion. In a poll of 1,700 respondents, 55% answered affirmatively to the statement, I was protected from harm by a guardian angel. The responses defy standard class and denominational assumptions about religious belief, the majority held up regardless of denomination, region, or education, though the figure was a little lower, 37% among respondents earning more than $150,000 a year. The guardian angel encounter figures were the big shocker in the report, says Christopher Bader, director of the Baylor survey, that covered a range of religious issues, parts of which are being released Thursday.
in a book titled What Americans Really Believe. In the case of angels, however, the question is a little stronger than just belief, says Bader. If you ask whether people believe in guardian angels, a lot of people will say, sure. But this is different. It's experiential. It means that lots of Americans are having these lived supernatural experiences. What's interesting about the Baylor findings on guardian angel experiences is that they cross all boundaries. They have scriptural rate, in Psalm 91, and elsewhere. They are clearly experiential. Realize any reality, dear skeptic, you are just deprived. The cross-spectrum legitimacy of the notion of angelic interventions may free Americans to engage in the kind of folk faith that is part of almost any religious system, but is not always officially acknowledged. But it's definitely evidence-based thinking, by every second person, reporting similar events. So are religious people, really as irrational as skeptics hope and claim? No, their undisclosed motivation is likely to be these internal natural rescue experiences, which reveal something mysterious and powerful, cares about them. But what is it? So, they go looking, researching, these experiences, that skeptics never seem to have, give these luckier people some insights, suggesting answers might be found in religious practices. So their interest in practicing religion, may be entirely due to secret personal experiences, that skeptics have not had, yet, putting religious people in the superior position of possession of more evidence and skeptics. Quite contrary to James Randis' teachings, personal experience is the most meaningful evidence. It's all our life is, dear skeptic, personal experience. And 50% of religious people have more precious life experience than you, dear deprived skeptic. So skeptics, maybe you just have to wait for evidence to come to you. You might just be near the end of the queue one of the last to wake up to the fact that the so-called paranormal is really ho-hum normal for most people. Bad-mouthing religious people, likely already ahead of you, in experience, is simply thoughtless destructive ignorance, personified by you, quite an ugly career choice, nothing to be proud of, so far, dear skeptic, you have been left out of major human experiences, and we wonder, why? Maybe you are doing something, wrong? That ugly career choice online, Maybe, tormenting religious people, perhaps it blocks your own personal growth and receptivity to refined influences. And quite contrary to James Randi's teachings, personal experience is the most meaningful evidence. It's all our own life really is, dear skeptic, personal experience. Surely, you don't want to argue about that.